Hi. Um, I think a lot of us would want to know, how is the metric system changing? <laughs> ah, I, am, I am so glad you asked. <laughs> and I, I, I have a tradition. I have a tradition. Everyone who asks me a question gets a copy of the wallet card of the fundamental constants of nature. So there you go. Up until now, up until now, since 1875, that was the time when the International Treaty of the Meter was signed by 19 countries who agreed that they were going to be part of the metric system, including the United States of America. We have been metric since the 19th century, just nobody noticed. <laughs> The definition of the kilogram, so you know, the MKS system, you know, meters, kilograms, seconds, the definition of the kilogram was, and still is today, the mass of the international prototype kilogram, a piece of metal, a hunk of platinum iridium that sits in a vault outside of Paris. That is the definition of the kilogram. If that thing gets dirty, you all lose weight. <laughs> Because it is a kilogram. Whatever it is, it's a kilogram. Well, that's a scandal. And, and so, because we can't have that kind of a scandal in, in measurement, we are going to redefine the kilogram. And this is the weird part, because this doesn't sound like you could do this. We're going to redefine the kilogram by defining the value of Planck's constant. Now, why does that work? Because Planck's constant is a kind of a conversion uh, um, constant between frequency and energy. That is, the energy of a photon, a single particle of light, is Planck's constant times the frequency. Okay? Well, um, we know how to measure frequency really well. Most famous equation in all of physics, E equals mc squared, right? We've already defined C many years ago to define the meter. The meter is the distance that light travels in a certain length of time. That defines the speed of light. We've got the speed of light defined if we, def we know how to measure frequency really well, and if we define Planck's constant, the thing that's left is the mass. You see, E equals Planck's constant times the frequency equals mc squared. That's how you get mass. Now, we're not actually going to weigh photons, but that sort of gives you a flavor of why defining Planck's constant. So not only are we going to do that with the kilogram, we are going to define the Kelvin, the unit of temperature, by defining Boltzmann's constant. Right now, the Kelvin is defined as 1 over 273.16 of the triple point of water. Not that wonderful. It's OK, but the triple point of water is hard to measure. Now it's going to be the value of Boltzmann's constant. Again, it's energy. Boltzmann's constant times temperature is energy. And we love energy. And uh, the mole, you know, the mole used to be, and still is today, uh, it tells you what Avogadro's number is. Avogadro's number is the number of things that make up a mole, and that's equal to the number of carbon-12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Not anymore. It's just going to be a number. <laughs> it's just a number. And there's one more. What am I? Oh, yeah, the charge on the electron. That's going to define the ampere. Today, the ampere is based on forces between current carrying wires. Now it's going to be a certain number of electrons per second. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs>